so we come to Palm Sunday, one of the joyous days of the Christian year, a real time of celebration. But here we are with an empty sanctuary, and uh, it seems to put a wet blanket on Holy Week and Easter as well. And I do miss the congregation, our gathering of the family, and uh, I'm sure you miss it as well. But I'm thankful that we can do this time together and uh, we can still celebrate the fact that uh, Jesus has come and that uh, the stone will have been rolled away and that because he lives, we shall live also. I want you to know that uh, we're still going on with activities in the church, full speed ahead as much as we possibly can. Uh, our food pantry is going to continue to operate and help people that need food. And uh, uh, we're going to still have uh, our program of uh, feeding people on Friday, uh, Meals on Wheels. <clears throat> and uh, I've been told by the children's ministry and the youth ministry that they're continuing to keep up with uh, their their folks on by way of uh, cell phones and all of this electronics that young people are used to connecting that way. And uh, I thank Vicki for her times of uh, speaking to us uh, every, every day during the week and for what Stuart is doing and keeping these things uh, going for us. And the music ministry continues, in other words, the church is still alive and still going strong. I'd like to fill you in on our financial package uh, picture. They tell me that we had over $128,000 come in in the month of March. That would include three Sundays when we were under the virus threat. That means that we were probably somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to $10,000 over our budgeted needs. Then on top of that, we received a, a, approximately $20,000 in building fund contributions. Wow, I gotta tell you, New Hope Methodist Church is really going strong. A lot of things are ha happening in the world, but New Hope is still there and doing the, the great job. I thank you for your generosity, your continued faithfulness. What a testimony to the greatness of this church and to the greatness of God. So thank you for keeping, with, keeping up with us, and we hope you'll stay in touch, that we will not lose contact with each other and with the Lord, that we'll st we are a family, even in spite of this virus. So thank you for being what you ought to be, a family. Good morning. Welcome to our Palm Sunday online worship service at New Hope Church, Brandon, Florida. We hope that you feel right at home with us here. And I just want to take one second to thank all these folks that have come together to help us put together a service on the deck and also our tech people. Thank them for being here very much, and um, especially during these challenging times. And if you're watching us on the web, if you would help us so we can take a tally of who has been watching us on the web, and if you would text the word HERE, H-E-R-E, to 813-689-4161, and then follow the prompts. It will take care of what we need to have from you for us to get a good count. So if you'd do that for us, text the word HERE, H-E-R-E, only HERE, to 813-689-4161 and then follow the prompts. It'll take care of the rest. But also, maybe this is a time for you to text someone else a good morning and how are you and how are you doing and even invite them to this worship service with us at findnewhope.com. We would love to have them be a part of our worship service as well. We hope that you will engage with us as we begin to worship our great God on this wonderful day.
Join me as we affirm our faith together by confessing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be sure to check out our website, findnewhope.com, for online resources for children's ministry, young adult ministry, and um, youth ministry. There's a lot of great stuff on there. Take advantage of that. Now let's move on to our pastoral prayer. 
wherever you are, please take a moment and bow your head. Holy God, on this Palm Sunday, we have so many mixed emotions. We remember Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem, with the people shouting praises and waving palm branches. And we join them this morning with our own praises and shouts of Hosanna. And yet, we can't help but remember how this beautiful parade of praise becomes another kind of parade before a condemning crowd, a parade in which praises become shouts to crucify him, honor and worship turns to mockery and insults, and our hearts are broken by these terrible shouts directed toward our Lord and the pain and suffering he experienced that day. And yet we know that it is because he chose to enter Jerusalem that we have hope, grace, mercy, healing, love, and salvation. Oh Lord, there are so many around our world who need to experience your hope today. There are so many who need to experience your grace, your mercy, your healing, and your love, and of course, your salvation. Lord, enter our lives today. Enter our communities, our nation, our world. We are so broken. We are so fearful and so emotionally, physically, and spiritually in need. We are tired and weary, Lord, and we need you. Heal us, holy God. Heal our land. Transform us. Transform our hearts in very real and lasting ways. Renew us. Renew us today as we worship you, not in a church building, but in new ways. Draw us closer to you this holy week. Empower us with strength and courage wherever we are. Help us experience your presence and recognize that you are with us always. How grateful we are for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I know you are sitting in your living room or around your kitchen table this morning, but I still have a very important question. Do you have your spiritual growth card? You can see I have mine right here. Let's read this aloud together. I will strive to pray regularly. I will strive to worship frequently. I will strive to read the Bible. I will strive to serve at and beyond new hope. I will strive to connect with others for growth and accountability, and I will strive to give of my time, talents, and resources. And remember, this is really important because this is our training plan for how to be a more fully devoted follower of Jesus. So how did you do this week? I know our schedules are very disrupted, um, but how do you do as far as your prayer life? How about reading the Bible? How much time did you commune with God by reading his word? How much time did you spend in service? I know we have to be creative now with our service opportunities, but if nothing else, we can be prayer warriors for our families and our churches and our communities. And what about connecting with other, other people? I know that um, I have some people who are making phone calls for me. If you would like to make um, phone calls to people that we want to connect with at New Hope, get in touch with me. I have some people who are Zooming with their small groups. Stay connected. It is so important. And finally, how are you doing on your giving? You know, giving is a spiritual discipline. It grows us. It changes our heart. And so this is the time in the service where if we were in the church building, we would receive our tithes and offerings, but we're still going to do that virtually. So if you have your offering, if you have your envelope, if you could take it, put your hand on it, consecrate it to God, and pray over it.
You'll see on the screen we have different options for giving. You can give online, and there's a link for that. You can um, text to give, and you can mail in your offering if you would like, and you'll find the church office address on the screen as well. Oh 
Our scripture reading for this morning is the traditional passage of scripture uh, about Palm Sunday. It's found in the Gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter, the first 11 verses. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the valley, village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt and uh, by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. They took, uh, this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to his daughter Zion, see, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt. They placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Now let us bow our heads for a prayer together. I give thanks to you, O Lord, that we can be a part of the crowd that welcomed you into the city, that we can be a part of the crowd that follows you, and praises you. But, oh Lord, may we be the crowd that keeps on going with you. Come and speak to us and challenge us and uh, give us your peace, your grace, your mercy, and your Holy Spirit. For we wait for you with an expectancy, all in the name of Jesus, the one who cares about us all. Amen. When I was in high school, there was a great uh, emphasis made on memorization. I had to memorize a, a lot of different things like the Gettysburg Address, the preamble to the Constitution, a uh, flower in the canted wall, and thank God I have not had to quote those things that I was required to memorize. But one of the things that I was also asked to memorize was that part of uh, Shakespeare's As You Like It, where uh, in a pensive moment, Shakespeare writes, all the world's a stage and the men and women are merely players. I remember my my teacher at my junior year in high school, Mrs. Vincent, said, I don't just want you to memorize this. I want you to understand what William Shakespeare was saying, that life is like a drama, a play, and there are various acts of that play. Act one was when you were a, a little bitty baby and dependent upon your, ch your parents. And act two is you became, uh, you learned to, to read and write and to grow. And act three was when you moved on into independence. And she explained to us, I think maybe you just may be in act three, but what's going to happen in act four and five and six? She went on to ask. I think maybe I might even be close to the final act in life right now as William Shakespeare described it. So I better say my prayers and be ready for the final act. That, uh, But there will be more too. 
But who am I to argue with William Shakespeare that all the world's a stage? But I will say this. I think all the world may be a parade ground as well. There are all manners of parades that are going on in, around us wherever we are, wherever we live, wherever we work, wherever we play. All different kinds of parades bidding us to come and walk that way and giving all kinds of false promises. And uh, what we do today is celebrate one of those parades, a significant parade. It's the parade that uh, we celebrate and remember on Palm Sunday when Jesus triumphantly entered the gates, the golden gate into Jerusalem. Now, I want you to understand that that parade didn't start on, at Bethphage as it does in our scripture lesson. But it started much earlier than that, three years before, when Jesus simply said to a group of fishermen, leave your nets and follow me. And the scripture says that straightway they left their nets and followed Jesus. They were mere mortals, mere human beings, normal people. But they made a decision to fall in line with Jesus and to walk in his parade. And on throughout the ministry of Jesus, there were other people who fell into his parade, who followed him and who uh, came after him. And uh, great crowds fell in line to walk in this parade of Jesus. I've been to uh, Bethphage. I've been to the Mount of Olives, walked down the same path that Jesus walked, down through the Kidron Valley. The Golden Gate is, is sealed now, but I saw where Jesus had walked. That's not enough. I want to walk and follow him and be a part of that parade. And he has welcomed me into that parade as a, 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 and I have joined many of my family members and many of my friends in walking in the parade with Jesus. Oh, there have been times when I've fallen out of line and walked over with another parade, but he was always there beckoning me back, bidding me to walk to the beat of a different drummer and get in line again. And he welcomed me back into a part of his parade. There's some things that I've noticed about the parade of Jesus. And one is that it's joyous. It's a joyous occasion. It was a joyous occasion on that first Palm Sunday. Uh, you can just see in the faces of the people, the sense of celebration and joy. This, uh, this parade was way before we had to worry about distances to other people. You can see they're always together as they gather around Jesus and, and be a part of that parade. When I was a child, I loved Palm Sunday because it was such a joyous time. It was such a happy celebration and uh, seemed so different than church that I often went to that seemed to be so doleful. But Palm Sunday was filled with a sense of joy. My early ministry, I, I had an associate pastor that I inherited. And I, I went to the church for my very first Sunday. And uh, he led the worship service. He, is such a, he was very doleful. He wasn't that way except when he got up to lead the congregation in worship on Sunday morning. But I shall never forget that with a frown on his face, he said, this is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our opening hymn is, oh, be joyful. And I, the first thing I did on Monday morning when I got with him was I said, you know, yesterday, when you were saying this is the day the Lord has made, let's be joyful. And I didn't believe you. And he said, what? Why not? I said, because you can't possibly say this is the day the Lord has made if you believe it and not have an excitement and a smile on your face. 
You're going to say, hey, hey, this is the day the Lord has made. We must rejoice and be glad in it. But you know, he never could do that. He couldn't get over that dolefulness. So I just had to have the, con the choir to sing the call to worship. I feel like that one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is a sense of joy. And we see that in the parade on Palm Sunday, the parade of Jesus. There's a joy in your heart when you follow him. Then uh, I want you to notice as well, though, that Jesus is very focused in this parade. You can, uh, you can almost sense it as he's riding into the city. I, I used to think, what a, it's one of the few times where Jesus is so public, so open to the, to the people and acceptance of all of their praises. It seems to be so different than the humble Christ. But I think he was so focused, he wasn't even aware of the praises of the, con of the congregation. I think he knew where he was going, and he was focused on going there. It was almost as if he wanted to throw aside the palm branches, throw aside the cloaks, throw aside the people, and make way so that I can go on to where I am destined to go to the cross. I like the fact that he was focused. Someone has said, the windshield is always bigger than the rear view mirror. And I like that. So oftentimes we look back more than we look forward. And we need to focus on what is coming, not what has been. And I'm excited about what's coming to New Hope United Methodist Church. I'm excited about what's going to happen in the kingdom of God. I'm excited about what's going to go hap going to happen in your life, in my life, and what's going to happen in our homes and in our community. I like the focus that Jesus had of looking forward, of moving to where he would go, where he was destined to go. But then I want you to know that He's going to the cross for sure. And I believe that's where he wants us to go with him. When we drop into the parade, we're going to have to go to the cross as well. I've often said this, that you can be saved and never be a Christian. You're saved by the grace of God, but then you become a Christian when you follow Jesus. And Jesus didn't stop in Jerusalem. He didn't stop in uh, Gethsemane, the garden of prayer. He kept going. He kept going right on to the cross, and he bids us to go with him. I had a big brother who was my hero. He was uh, eight years older than I was. He was tall, handsome, had a great sense of humor, and uh, was a pretty good athlete. Well, one day when I was about eight or nine years old, two bullies uh, got me and pushed me around and threw my bicycle into the creek. I was livid. And I was also frustrated because they were bigger than I was and I couldn't do anything about it. So I went home and I said to my big brother, Hero, I said, listen, these two guys pushed me around and threw my bike in the creek, and I can't whip them by myself, but I think the two of us can take them, so let's go get them. And he said, no, I'm not going to do that. And I said, what, are you chicken? He said, no, I'm not a chicken, I'm smart. And I said, smart, what are you talking about? He said, well, if I go with you and we beat them up, then they're going to go get their big brother to come and beat me up. Then we've got to go get somebody else to join us so we can go beat them up. Well, that's the way you start a war. So he said, I'm going to end it right now. 
I'm not going to go and beat them up. And I was, <laughs> I was so frustrated. And I said, well, what can I do about my bicycle? He said, get it out of the creek. <laughs> he was such a practical person. Went on to become a lawyer. And years later, I was serving a church. It was about 45 miles north of Nashville, Tennessee, which is where his office was. And this was during the period of uh, uh, the uh, uh, racial unrest and uh, the McCarthy era. And there was a man who was a member of the church that had gone around telling everybody that uh, because I had... Uh, uh, welcomed black people that I was a communist and that I was preaching communism. And uh, uh, I put up with it for a long time. He never had heard me preach, but he was telling everybody what I was, what I was. He never met me, but he was blasting away at me. And I, I finally decided to confront him. So I was going by his house uh, to deck him in the name of Jesus, of course. But when I got there, uh, he wasn't there. It's always amazing to me how God takes care of drunks and Methodist preachers because that man wasn't there. So I, But yet I wanted to do something about it. So I called my brother and said, I, have a, I want to sue this man for defamation of character. And uh, he said, uh, so I said, I'd like to talk to you about this lawsuit. So he said, well, come on down to my office. So I drove down and his secretary took me into the office and into his office. And he sat behind the desk and I sat in what was the client's chair. And he asked me about the problem. And I said, look, I don't care about the money. I just want to sue this guy to shut him up. So uh, take it and do what you can with it. And uh, my brother was just like most lawyers. They have a very dry sense of humor and wit about him. And uh, I, I remember how he sort of leaned back in his chair and he said, you know, uh, I don't know much about the Bible. I certainly don't know as much as you do. But nowhere in the Bible do I ever remember Jesus suing anybody. He said, of course, no one ever called him a communist. They just crucified him. Then he said, that's the man you follow, isn't it? And I said, yes, sir, it is. And then he said, well, follow him. Just follow him, Riley. Don't sue somebody. Just follow his example. And following his example means we've got to go to the cross. Not only go to the cross to receive forgiveness of our sins, to be washed clean and pure again, but it means where we go and die with him, where we put aside the things of the world, and we sacrifice those things that we have thought were so important and simply take up the cross and walk on after him. I believe Jesus is coming here right now on this Palm Sunday to where we are. He says to us, follow me. We do well to drop in line that incredible line that has wound its way through centuries of people who said, I will take up the cross and follow him. So should we. And that's the truth. Amen.
my brothers and sisters, as we enter into Holy Week, let us keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, and he will show us the way to go. Amen.